Hey guys, it's Will here and tonight I've got another unboxing video for you. As you can see here, I've got the Stormcast Eternals Knight Heraldor. So this is uh, one of the uh, single character camp clan packs for Age of Sigmar. And from what I've heard, potentially quite a core cool model in the game. He's got a, a trumpet that allows um, friendly units to potentially run and charge in the same turn, which gives the Stormcast some much needed mobility. And also his trumpet can do uh, damage to enemy units that are near terrain features. So let's open him up and take a look at what you get in the box. So I've already snipped this open to make it easier to get into. And uh, first thing, obviously the base. It's a Terminator size base, so pretty standard for Stormcast. And uh, I like these because they allow you to do a bit more in the way of customization on your bases, because you've got that bit more room to play with. Then we've got the uh, assembly instructions here. Um, so these look pretty straightforward to be honest you wouldn't really need to follow them to build the model but worth having if you need to refer to anything. And you've got this QR code down here which is interesting because you can essentially bring up the war scroll by scanning that and that I guess will take you to the GW website where they've got all the war scrolls on all the relevant pages for all the Age of Sigmar units. But to be honest if you're serious about playing Stormcast you should have the battle tome anyway. Right, now let's take a look at the model himself. So uh, it's all on one sprue, as all these clan packs are. And uh, you can see there's a fair few bits, and some of the cuts are in slightly random places, but I think that's the way it is with a lot of the particularly Age of Sigmar models, and the way the computer-aided design seems to uh, produce them. So you've got the main body here, with the back of the body, you've got the right leg, no, that's left leg, is it right? No, it is right leg and left arm, which has got the trumpet. And the trumpet's pretty cool on here. It's um, see nice and long, as befits a Stormcast. It's got nice gold detailing across the top. I say gold detailing. That's obviously going to get painted in gold. Um, you've got some nice detail across the trumpet, and then this pennant hanging off that's got the Stormcast symbol embossed on there. One thing you will notice is the tip is actually in two pieces, so one part is on the main body of the trumpet and there's another bit you add on later. Then if we flip this around you can see you've got the front of the body which has also got the right arm and you can see it's got this very nice um, sort of scale mail um, armoured skirt type thing there, or armoured kilt. Skirt doesn't sound manly enough, it's a kilt. And uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting to paint. You've got all these uh, layers of detail on there. Um, got the other leg, which has got a bit of that on it as well. And the front of that is blank, so you add in that bit there to finish that off. One shoulder pad, pretty Stormcast standard. The other one is attached to this cloak here. So this isn't quite as uh, fancy and ornate as the Lord Celestant model. But still pretty cool. Um, you've got some nice detail there that's going to shade quite nicely and then these bits on the end that are going to be gold detailing. So uh, plenty of good details there. And then the sword I think is really cool. He's got this sort of sword that's positioned pointing down into the ground which I think uh, makes, it, makes for a nice pose. And the sword itself has got all this um, script work detail on there and a nice ornate pommel. So uh, yeah it looks like he should be a pretty cool model. As I said, it looks pretty straightforward to paint up, uh, to assemble, sorry. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to assemble him and show you what he looks like once he's put together. And here he is, fully assembled. Um, it's pretty straightforward to do, nothing too complicated. Uh, one thing that was interesting was the uh, instruction manual. It actually pulls out and you get a couple of pages on the inside as well as just that back page. Um, I didn't really need it for much, but it's just worth noting that um, the forward leg, so that's his uh, left leg, um, doesn't go in until you've put both halves of the body together. If you try to put it in before that, it won't really work. But other than that, you can essentially assemble him in whatever order you want. Um, like I say, um, very high quality model, um, as you'd expect from GW these days. Very little flashing and uh, yeah, all went together fine. So uh, I'll just give I've left him unattached from the base for now because I might do something interesting with that. Uh, not sure yet, but all that's left for me to do now is paint him up and show you what the model looks like once it's finished. 
and here's my completed Knight Heraldor. As you can see, I've painted him up in the colours of the Hammers of Sigmar to match the rest of my army, and I've done this uh, Realm of Fire lava basing on there. And uh, yeah, it was uh, a nice model to paint. Um, nothing too fiddly, but a lot of opportunities for uh, some good uh, shading and um, layering, highlighting, etc. Um, about sort of the same difficulty as all the other um, standard sort of Sigma models. Um, they all uh, go together pretty nicely, and uh, yeah, if you put the time in, produce a really nice result. Um, the only thing that was really difficult was getting in behind the cloak there, um, where you sort of get between the cloak and the kilt, but that's uh, pretty standard for any model with a cloak, really. Cloaks, are, uh, they look good, but they just get in the way, not practical. And uh, yeah, there he is. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!